Hello and welcome to ADTV. Today you catch up with us on the banks of our local river Waveney and I'm joined by Phil Spinks and today we've been doing a spot of chub fishing. I know Phil it's one of your, your sort of favourite fish to target at this time of year through the summer months and stuff and um, you know there's, there's, there's obviously a lot of different ways to catch them but this time of year when it's nice and bright and we've got warmer temperatures what's uh, a couple of your favourites like we've been doing today? A thing like we've been doing today it's really nice to have sort of minimalistic gear um, and have a walk along the river with just your, your bag, your rod and your net, perhaps a loaf of bread, a decent set of polaroids and, and try and find some chub and it's really exciting they'll come up and take the bread off the surface yeah, you know we're, we're seeing it today you see the sort of the dark shapes come out from yeah. the you know the lighted colored bottom and they snake out from the weed and the, uh, the, the biggest thing is finding them once you can find some it, normally if you can find them and you can see them they're pretty greedy and you, you, know. you, you plop a piece of bread in front of them and they'll normally race up and eat it what sort of areas are you you know you're normally looking for or I, I guess it's the classic i mean some of the areas today you know overhanging trees you know bits where you know you've got a nice glide where the you know they're separated by weed or it's like it's funny today because you get the most perfect chub fishing swim with a, a bend and a little bit deeper and everything about it screams chub and we've not seen to, whether no, they're the ones because no. they're swims that are getting fished harder by other anglers yeah. And then we've just been walking along kind of bland looking straights and there's oh there's a couple there's, of chub yeah, there yeah um one big thing we have found today uh, we've, we've covered quite a bit of river if we found any sort of little weir pools or anything where there's a bit of oxygenated water yeah. because the river's so low at the minute they seem as if they're, they're cramming into these little sluices yeah and I, weirs. I suppose that you know this time of year especially perhaps not so much in the winter but when it has been warm and you know, it's almost quite stagnant in place. So we've had quite a, a period now of warm weather. Yeah. Anywhere where there's that bit of oxygen and yeah, you know, the, that's that's where they're holding up and the up, upper wave me has very little flow. So I think anywhere where you get a bit of bit of moving water and a bit of oxygen is um really attractive. Yeah, it's certainly worked today. I mean as far as sort of tackle goes, there's not really a lot to talk about, is there? No, no, it's I think it's what I enjoy about it. We, we haven't got a barrel full of fishing gear. Yeah. Um, we're not sitting here for 24 hours. We've just <laughs> got, I mean, we have made it a bit harder today. I've, I've, I insisted on taking a little lure rod out. Watching a chub take a surface lure is really exciting. Yeah. So um, we probably have, um, we got a few fish under a belt with the throat and bread. And then I, um, I marched Chris along miles of river sand. We need <laughs> to catch one on the lure now. about four miles, I think, <laughs> up and down the banks. But... It was uh, it was all worth it, and just with I noticed the uh, you know the the lure you had just a little pop there. Is yeah, little, the... little surface lures, um, anything that skips or pops across the surface. I think you're imitating all sorts of things like grasshoppers, um, maybe small mice or anything. You know, God knows what they think it is, Any but anything that frogs, I guess yeah, anything, anything like that. Anything that crawls across the top. Um, it's generally quite weedy and shallow along here, so it's something you can skip across in between the weed beds and the chub. If the chubs see it, generally they'll they'll oh. they'll nail it. And I I, I notice you, you don't actually do that much with the rod tip. I guess the way the the sort of lure is shaped, it pops. You could hear the little the yeah, little popper noises going across. My, and my favourite ones have got like a little flat nose, and if you just twitch the rod tip, it'll just pop and throw up a spurt of water and just skip along the top. You don't don't have to do it stupidly quick, as long as you're causing a little wake and a few little noises just to draw yes. attention to it yeah I think they, they they come up to investigate I think more than anything like you say whether it's I don't know, a slug falling out the tree it's that plop and I guess you get that like you know with the the bread and the free line and we've been doing today as well yeah. I guess you get that that similar sort of you can, you can no and, noticeably see whenever it's your piece of bread or whether it's a load the minute it splashes on the surface yeah you can see the chub turn I think what was that and it's you know they, they think they are more predatory than you think so when you're you're obviously you know using the the bread it's, it's quite a visual bait I know today you used it a couple of different ways. We obviously used it floating on the surface, yeah. and you just and you use sort of slow sinking as well. Yeah, and I find when I go in a swim, if I can see some chub, normally that the first cast on a bit of float and crust, just because I really like watching them take it yeah, off the top. Yeah, it's nothing more exciting. Um, and you can normally, you know, if there's a group of fish there, you might squeeze one or two off the top and catch a couple. And then they put their guard up a little bit. Their mates are wondering what's yeah. going on. So I think by putting a slow sinking bit of bread on, just just squeezing it a bit tight around the hook. I think if you just sink it slowly past the nose on the drop, they, you know you can get a couple of extra bites out of the swim. It, it perhaps sort of catch them them sort of slightly more wary ones. Yeah, you know, that they've come down from the surface and and the chub being chub, they're too greedy to say no a lot of the <laughs> yeah. time. Well, that, that's that's one thing. You know, I I noticed using quite a large hook today. I mean, what size? 
Yeah, I'm probably size sixes. Size six. Yeah, six maybe an eight. And then um, you, you, and you're talking quite a good chunk, a flake or, or crust as well. Yeah, even a, a, a three pound chub has got a, a probably a mouth about the size of a twenty pound carp. Yeah. There, you know, yeah. they, they'll eat other fish. They'll eat all sorts of yeah. stuff. I think one of the things I like about chub fishing is how versatile it is. And if you want to catch them on lures, you can. If you want to trot a float with maggots, you can. If you want to stalk yeah. them with bread and big slugs and things, you, there's lots of different ways yeah. to fish for yeah. them. And it's all, um, like I say, ideal, you know, this time of you get a nice evening, you know, you got you got your family and stuff. You want to pop out for an hour or so, what, a rod, net, little bag of tackle, exactly and, and right. you're ready just, to go. You, you can just pop in the supermarket after work, grab a loaf of bread, yeah. take minimal gear, and even if, like I say, if you've got an hour spare, you might have a stretch of river in mind that you can just walk down for an hour. And this time of year, when it's warm, if you can see them, generally you can you catch can, them. You can catch them. Well, I hope, you know, that's sort of perhaps inspired you to, to get out there and give it a go and see if you can't catch a few for yourself. <laughs>